This video is on IPv4 subnetting. Subnetting is a process by which the portions of an IP address create more networks than you would have if you used the default subnet mask. It takes network and splits it into smaller networks, known as subnets. There are two parts to an IP address, network ID and host or node ID. Treat network ID as a classroom and treat host ID or node ID as an individual student. To make it efficient, it's logical to have more classrooms in order to facilitate high amount of students. Subnetting does not increase the number of IP addresses available. It increases the number of network IDs and as a result, decreases the number of node IDs per network. Let's see an example of why we would subnet. We have a network group with a lot of hosts or nodes. They are intermingled and not organized. This makes it inefficient, unsecure, and harder to manage. So we use subnetting to make more classrooms for the hosts or nodes that exist. Accounting and marketing, for example here, was together before, but with subnetting, it is now in separate subnets. Now the network is not congested. It also creates more broadcast domains. Broadcasts are not forwarded by routers, so they are limited to the network on which they originate. Main reason we use subnetting is because it enables us to more effectively use IP address ranges and it makes IP networking more secure and manageable by providing mechanisms to create multiple networks rather than having just one. Using multiple networks confines traffic to network that it needs to be on, which reduces overall network traffic levels. Now that you understand what subnetting is and why we do it, we're actually gonna go through the process of how to actually subnet. Before we get started, we need to go over the IPv4 address structure. Here we have IPv4 address. There are three dots to separate four groups of numbers called octet. It's called octet because if you convert the numbers separated by the dot, it is 8 digits long in binary. That's why in total there's 32 bits for IPv4 address. The group of numbers range from 0 to 255. So how does 0 to 255 convert into binary? Well, let's look at an example. Here's an octet binary cheat sheet for those who don't know how to convert things into binary. As you can see in this octet, the numbers will change depending on how many ones there are and where it is in the sequence. And like we mentioned before, 0 is the lowest and 255 is the highest when it comes to octet. To max it out, you need to put ones throughout the octet. If you want 254, you take out the last one out. And if you want 253, you take the one before the last one out and put one at the end. How does this work? Well, if you look at the top column, it shows you how many one is actually worth. It shows you that the number multiplies by in the power of two. So going from right to left, we got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Because that's how binary works. Basically, every time you go to the left, it doubles. And using this method, you can cover all numbers from 0 to 255. If you want 1, you put 1 at the end. If you want 2, you put 1 before the last one. If you want 3, you put 1s at the last 2. Okay, now let's get into how you would actually subnet the IP address. To subnet, you will need to apply a subnet mask. Subnet mask is another 32-bit number created by setting host bits to all zeros and setting network bits to all 1s. Subnet mask looks just like an IPv4 address. Subnet mask has very specific structure. It begins with a sequence of ones and then turns into a string of zeros if you convert it into binary. The part with ones is the network part of the mask, while the string of zeros is the so-called host. So as you could see here, you need to know where the subnet mask stops with the one. As soon as the zero starts, you draw a line. The number of ones can also be called CIDR. It's known as classless interdomain routing. We'll talk about that in a little bit. CIDR is basically known as the number that comes after the slash. For example, a subnet mask that uses all 8 bits from the first octet and 4 from the second will be described as slash 12 because there's 12 ones. Anyways, going back to where we drew the line from where ones end and zero start. We can get two different numbers, the network ID and the broadcast ID. 
You get the network ID by copying all IP address numbers where subnet mask equals one. You basically copy and paste it. And as soon as it starts to zero, you put all zeros. For broadcast ID, you do the same thing, except you put all ones. After that, you convert the binaries back into regular IP address architecture, and any numbers that fall between the network ID and broadcast becomes the host addresses. And there you go, now you know how to subnet. A broadcast address is network address used to transmit all devices connected to a multiple access communications network. A message sent to the broadcast address may be received by all network attached hosts. And the network ID is a designated particular subnet to give an identity on the network. Now that you know how to subnet, let's go over two types of addressing, classless and classful. The terms classless and classful characterize both IP addressing and IP routing protocols. So confusion exists as to meaning of the terms. Cisco routers have two configurable options for how router uses an existing default route, classless routing and classful routing. This has addressing after it, so don't confuse the two. In classful addressing, there are five subclasses, A through E. Classful addressing divides the IP4 address space. However, only A, B, C are used for network hosts. Class D is reserved for multicasting and Class E is reserved for future use. Class A uses the first 8 bit of an address and may be suitable for very large networks. And B is for smaller than Class A but still big. Class C are suitable for small networks. Why is it designed this way? Well, let's look at Class A. IP addresses belonging to Class A are assigned to networks that contain large number of hosts. The network ID is 8 bits long. The host ID is 24 bits long. This makes sense because it's a big network with a lot of hosts. The higher order bit of the first octet in class A is always set to zero, and the remaining seven bits in first octet are used to determine the network ID. The 24 bits of the host IDs are used to determine the host in any network. The default subnet mask for class A is 255, Dot x, dot x, dot x. Therefore, class A has a total of 126 network with two addresses taken out, along with 16.7 million hosts. Class B is for medium to large networks, with network ID being 16 bits long and host ID being 16 bits long. Notice how host bits gets lower while the network ID gets bigger. Class 4 IP addressing is more efficient than the older first 8 bits method of chopping up the IPv4 address space, it simply wasn't sustainable with the technological advancement. The problem with classful addressing method is that millions of class A addresses are wasted, whereas number of addresses available in class C is so small that it cannot cater to the needs of the organization. And this is why classless addressing was made. It is an addressing architecture that uses variable length subnet masking. It is an addressing that uses the CIDR notation that we discussed before. Classless interdomain routing CIDR is an IPv4 method of assigning addresses outside the standard class A, B, and C structure because specifying number of bits in the subnet mask offers more flexibility. With variable length subnet masking VLSM, it is possible to use different subnet masks for the same network number of different subnets. This way, a network admin can use long mask on networks with few hosts and short mask on subnets with many hosts thus allowing each subnet in a routed system to be correctly sized for the required size. Network ID and host ID change based on classless in a class 4 addressing. However, in classless, there is no distinction between network ID and host ID. Addressing without a class is more practical and helpful than addressing with a class.